Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the Dilemmas of a Book Nerd tag. So this was created by Lindsay's Little Library, and I was tagged by Time for Books. I will link to both of their videos below. You may also see Biggie is here in the background. He's just cleaning himself. Don't mind him. He does that. There are 10 questions here, so I'm going to go through the questions and share my answers, and then I'm going to tag some other booktubers at the end. So, question one, book storage. How do you store and organise your books? So... I store my books in bookcases. I know, very strange, right? Uh, I have them all alphabetized by author surname. So this one behind me is A alphabetically uh, from A onwards. So up there we've got along to like David Baddiel there, Ned Bowman, Ken Bowes, Dan Brown, Charles Bukowski. Uh, going down to like Agatha Christie there and this is in my living room and then we go through there We have a little hallway and there's a little bookcase in there and then there's also my bedroom Which is where the majority of my books are um, I have a built-in bookcase there as well Which I use for some TBR stuff and some author copies of books that I've written as well And uh, yeah, I just have lots of bookcases. They literally line the walls question number two tracking How do you keep track of what you have read and what books you own? I use Goodreads basically. I also have a big list which is just my like list of books I want to buy but then they're also marked as want to read on Goodreads. So usually when I'm out and about charity shopping I'll have the Goodreads app on my phone so then if I see say I don't know an Agatha Christie book or say like a Peter James book where the titles of all the books are like need you dead, want you dead, love you dead and they all kind of sound the same so uh, if I've got the Goodreads app I can go in and then I can see whether I've marked it as you know want to read or whether I've read it and my Goodreads is also all up to date with like reviews for every book I've ever read and then I post an ongoing review for each one and then yeah it's, it's a duplicate of my uh, like bookish wish, wish list as well but I keep those two kind of separate because then in the event that I don't know something happens to Goodreads I've still got my own list as well. Question number three borrow do you lend your books out? I mean Borrowing and lending are two very different things because <laughs> I have a friend who'll be like, can you borrow me that album or whatever? And it's like, do you mean, can I lend you that album? Yes, I can lend you the album, but I can't borrow it to you. I can borrow it from you. Anyway, do I lend my books out? Not really. Um, I, I let my girlfriend borrow some because we have fairly overlapping tastes. We also have some quite different tastes as well. Uh, there are even some books that we've like both got or that, you know, that... We've both got on our to read list, so we'll both read it at the same time. Uh, yeah, so like I lent her Horns by Joe Hill. Um, I actually bought it at a charity shop and then she started reading it and then she just borrowed it before I even got it home. So, actually, and actually, it's what I'm currently reading now, so she's finished it. I have not. Uh, what else has she borrowed? Um, I lent her a graphic novel um, when she was in hospital and I like put some little post it notes throughout it so that as she read through it, she'd get to the next post it note. Um, yeah. Just if she sees something. I mean, the rule originally was, like, she can borrow stuff while she's here, as long as it just, like, doesn't leave the library. But, um, yeah, no, nah, she can borrow, because she, I mean, she takes care of books better than I do. So she can borrow stuff, because I also know that she knows how obsessive about stuff I am. So she'd make sure that I got it back, you know? And if she couldn't give it back to me for whatever reason, she'd just buy me another copy. Question four, buying. How do you buy or acquire books? So it's a bit of a mix. I get the occasional review copy, probably an average of less than one a month now. Uh, at, at its peak, I got maybe like three or four a month. For indie books, I tend to buy them from Amazon. And then um, for other stuff, like especially like mass market stuff, I tend to get them from eBay, just because you can get them cheaper, really, uh, as a general rule at least. And uh, yeah, but actually for like 70% of my books, I get them from charity shops, so... Um, yeah, you'll, you'll have seen in my hauls, like, I, I, I like, I'm like, I've got 12 books for £10 or something. So I just get them used from charity shops. The money goes to charity and I get the books. And also, like, I've seen debates about this because I do kind of see why that's, like, it's not good. It's not ideal for the author because the author doesn't get a share of those resale royalties. But at the same time, the books that you see in charity shops... You know, you're not going to... The, the authors who need the support are indie authors. So authors like, say... I, I mean, Agatha Christie is a great example. I've collected most of her books from charity shops. And she's dead. So there's that for a start. But then also, like, I know, like, money goes to her family and stuff. But um, th I don't think she needs it as much as, say, you know, Charlie Heathcote or something where I'll just buy it. Maybe buy a book directly from the author. Question number five, comments. How do you respond to the how do you read so much comment or similar comments? Well, I always say it's a mixture of two things. I'm a quick reader and I spend a lot of time reading. Like, that's it. 
And uh, I think the more you read, the quicker you get at reading as well. I know there are things like speed reading techniques and stuff, which I've never like looked into, but it's possible I have like um, kind of adopted some of them. Especially if if like I'm not too into a book and I'm like 50 pages from the end. I, I don't skim read as such, but I certainly like I read faster than I normally would. And because of that, I miss things and sometimes do have to go back to reread it. But um, it's like a trade off, you know, so I can probably finish it a little bit quicker, but I won't absorb quite as much of it. Also, audiobooks are good as well. Uh, I also read anytime I'm on like public transport. I do because uh, I work from home. And so every hour I read for like five, ten minutes just as a little break. Uh, I read before bed as well. Yeah, when I can. Question number six, next book. How do you pick your next book? With this guy. Well, this is a new thing on my channel. I've started doing my Cat Picks My TBR. And earlier today, uh, he picked out three books for me, which I'm quite excited about all three of them. And he hasn't had a bad pick yet. So that's good. Um, I don't know. It, it, sometimes I'm quite a mood reader as well. And in fact, historically, I've never done TBRs. But I'm... I'm kind of cutting down on the number of books on my currently reading list. So at the start of this year, I was on about 240, 250. And I think at the latest, I'm on 163. So um, yeah, I'd like to get that below 100 if I can. And so because of that, a lot of the books I'm reading are ones that I've owned for ages and just haven't really felt like picking up. And then this, that's where Biggie comes in. He picks them out for me. Question number seven, travel. How do you pick what book you bring on vacation with you? This is actually fairly simple. I normally pick up my longest book on my TBR, which is usually Stephen King. In fact, I'm going away to Tamworth, which is the town I, you know, I grew up in till I, till I was like seven, no, till I was like 19. Um, and so there'll be a lot of travel there, which means a lot of reading time. So I'm gonna read uh, Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King, which is the third of the books that Biggie picked for me. And that's actually the book that's been on my like, currently reading for the longest that like I've owned but just haven't picked up. Question number eight, annotate. Do you write in highlight or mark up your books in any way? Sorry I got confused because there wasn't a comma there but we'll just roll with that. Um, sometimes, sometimes if I'm reviewing something for booktube as well I'll use little tabs um, but I'm not really doing as many re like individual reviews anymore. Um, been doing more like wrap-ups and stuff lately because really because because I review so few of my books it doesn't seem like there's any point in like tabbing out all of them but then that means that I start reading the book and I get 70 pages in and then I'm like damn I wish I'd been tabbing this out this would have made for a good review but by then it's too late so this that is actually kind of a dilemma you know um, as for like you know if I'm studying something or whatever I have no problem with writing in books I actually once took to Glastonbury I took a copy of my own book to get some like photos of it in and around the uh, festival and then uh, I ran out of space in my notebook so uh, I started writing on my own book, which I thought was quite cool. Question number nine, new or backlist? Which do you prefer, new or backlist books? Easily backlist books. Um, I would say 80 to 90% of what I read is, is backlist. Partly because also when I find an author that I really love, I just read all of their books. I'm kind of a completionist like that. And so that just means my like wish list is disproportionately backlist books. You know, a new author might release a book and I'll, I'll add that one book but that's then up against 1700 backlist books, you know, so. Question number 10, sequels. Do you read books as they are released or wait for an entire series to be published before reading one book? I actually don't read that many series and when I do, I quite often end up reading them out of order, especially if it's something like, you know, I don't know, Hercule Poirot, where the, you can read them all as standalones. So I, I guess I just read them as and when. I'm probably more like, what's most likely is that I'll read maybe books one and two in a series and then by the time I get to the next one, it'll be because like book three wasn't out and then book three came out, book four came out and then book five came out and people started like rereading books three and four and then donating them to charity shops and stuff and then I picked up three and four and then I'm like, oh, well I might as well get to number five now. So I don't know if that was if that made any sense, but that's my answer. Okay, so that brings us to the end. So now I'm going to tag some people. I'm gonna do my usual thing. I basically go into my YouTube and look at who recently commented on some of my videos. And I think I'm just gonna do like the five most recent booktubers who commented. So I am gonna tag Charles Heathcote because he's my most recent comment. Hey, Charlie. I'm gonna tag Pints and Paperbacks. I'm gonna tag Woman vs. Books. I'm gonna tag Jason's Weird Reads. And I'm gonna tag Fred Weasley died laughing and actually I'm gonna throw in a bonus tag for Todd the librarian because I don't know if he's done this or not but uh, 
you know, he's the king of tags in, in my book. So there we have it. That's what I made of the Dilemmas of a Book Nerd tag. Uh, like I said, I will link below to Lindsay's little library in her original video and also to Time for Books. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers, whether you agree, disagree, etc. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon in another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.